good. We didn't fuck it up this time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to Parlay 8's Village Overload. My name is Ballast, and soon to be joining me will be Lashing. We are coming to you live from our little lair. Uh, we got anybody with us yet? We have nine people joining us right now. Could have right. spoke a bag and say, what's up? What's up, Smoke What's bag? up? How are we doing tonight? All right, so we're going to get into a little bit of uh, who we are. You know what? Bite me. Oh. It took me a month to figure it out, but I got it figured out. And also the difference is it went to the back camera instead of the front camera this time. You didn't tell me that was fixed. <laughs> you got to read out what you're saying, too. You said it was my first try. Oh, okay. It was my first try. It didn't take me 15 minutes to figure it out this time. <laughs> so, who's Parley 8? Um, well, I guess the backstory on us is we started this thing uh, getting into Halloween costuming. Um, Deborah made us our first costumes a few years ago, and it kind of went from there. So right now, where we're at is that we, uh... Hey, GTO. She does all the sewing, um, making all the garb, um, everything you see us wearing, um, she has made, including my hat and her vest, my coat, everything I'm wearing. We wanted to be pirates full time when we found every excuse to do it. <laughs> so here we are nowadays with... Our community finally figuring out that we're pirates full time. I make everything uh, from all the woodworking stuff, all the signs that you see on our site, um, the pub signs. I uh, do bottles. I, a lot of a lot of what I do is custom. So because we do custom orders too, um, if you message us and you want something we try and make it for you um i've done everything from right now i'm actually working on a statue that i bought making it into a pirate using clay uh to going to to the store and get wood and and making things out of wood uh it just depends on what strikes me as cool at the time so it's been kind of a chaotic month, I guess would be the safe thing to say. Turmoil, <laughs> seas, and everything safe. since last time we were on at the Polar Plunge. Uh, obviously, this one was supposed to be at the Irish Festival in Richmond, and they canceled it because this little thing called the coronavirus. We like rum. Why would it be called the coronavirus? Well, at least there's not a run out of rum right now. Yeah, really. The, please, ABC, stay open. <laughs> Don't close. <laughs> we'll be in trouble if the ABC stores close in Virginia. Yeah. I'm telling you what. Week home, we already been through three bottles. Killed three soldiers. Probably <laughs> several more will be done before the end of the weekend. <laughs> so we're trying to deal with that. Um, a lot of things are getting canceled, obviously, um, because of the nature of what we do. Uh, going to events where there's a lot of people, we can't be doing that right now. They they frown upon that, you know, but... Yeah, so we're kind of taking it... Right now it's kind of week by week, really. The um, Kung Fu. Fu? <laughs> Who's saying S what out there? S Smoke says the Kung Flu. The Deep Dick Dong. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't... <laughs> Say look. that ten times fast. <laughs> after a few bottles of rum, yeah, they won't be saying much after that. Well, it started in China, but it didn't take long to get everywhere else because, you know... It was just amazing because, you know, Chinese shipping, whenever I order anything for our shit, takes like two weeks. Yeah. That guy here, what? You would have thought it would have taken a lot longer to get here than that because, you know, how slow that everything takes to get here otherwise. 
But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, in that light. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> we're uh, we're doing this because the Irish Festival in Richmond was canceled. Um, this was our alternative. We thought we'd still hit you guys up and give you a live stream and tell you what's going on in our lives and you know give you a little entertainment understand what a pirate really is yeah. besides all the you rum know, there, really there, the truth is it's all about the rum there is a little bit more to it than the rum rum helps though it does help a lot rum helps a lot a lot if you ever met our crew it <laughs> helps a, a lot what's what goes on at camp Stays in camp. Yeah. You know, we it's a lot like mm -hmm. Vegas. We don't bring that stuff home with us. So here we are. Um, giving it to you live. Uh, right now, we're working on um, more stuff for the store. We're trying to redouble our efforts and, and get the Parley8.com going and, you know, up in our game in that department. We want more people to be like us. Plus be like pirates. Plus we're doing this. And this is going to happen more often too. So Really? Really? Oh yeah. No. Get on the bad way. Get on. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're stuck here. Which isn't a horrible place to be stuck. <sighs> you know. At least we like each other. That helps a lot. Being <laughs> <laughs> so Lashing's been working on the website trying to get that squared away and and I've been making bottles and she's been making bottles and she's yeah, gonna start. bottles called lots of rum more <laughs> rum more rum and uh just getting our stuff squared away you know everybody's at home now and hopefully they're all doing the same thing we are <clears throat> just getting our lives squared away and Getting to know their families again and and dealing with that. GTO says, I like the swords. They're real. Um, well, all four of them are real. And we actually practice with them and try not to kill each other with them. If, uh, I, if I can get over there, I'll give you a little, <clears throat> little history on them. Would you like me to pass them to you so you don't stab me with them? Yeah, you around? can. If you, want, if you can get them off there. Oh, yeah. You can well, get them over here and we'll talk about each one, I guess. This sword is um, technically it is not. When I said smoke. We we uh, we reenact the golden age of piracy also, and that's what we try and focus on with Parley Eight. So this sword is technically not historically accurate to the time period we're in. Um, it's actually a uh, early nineteenth century cavalry sword. So technically, it's about. 80 years too late um, but it looks cool um, the main thing about it is the design of the handle and the length of the sword most swords back in the early 1700s weren't this long and skinny especially anything that a pirate wanted to use because when you're on board a ship you want to keep your sword short and Basically, you just swung it around hacking at things because most pirates didn't have any kind of sword training. So, so these two are really what we use when we're out on site and we're doing our reenactment and we're we're doing our gigs pretty much. And they are steel, and the uh, you can see how I'm handling them. They're they're not sharp. No, they're I'll not sharp. You. Give me that one. This, but but. <laughs> You, you whack a person right with them, yeah. they still it's hurt. Still, you can still hurt somebody, especially, I mean, this one's got a nice little point on the hill. And then this sword, this sword's heavy. This thing weighs about probably three pounds, which is super heavy for a sword of this size. But, you know, I got it at a at a Hollywood costume shop, shop yeah. and it's, you know... It was made for just carrying around and looking good. These we bought specifically so we could do theater and seriously fight each other. And, and we practice. And uh, we actually had a, a learning experience recently with a guy who taught a bunch of those P 
people did the movies and all that. Um, we had the opportunity of doing a little film called Hands Pirate Trilogy. If Regent University had a grad student that was deciding to do it on Blackbeard and Israel Hands, and they needed people to come and fight. So for six weeks, we drove two hours and got trained on this for free. So yeah, We actually learned how to sword fight like the right way. It, so we've been uh, decided to try to keep up on it, and these were very, very late Christmas presents, <laughs> a.k.a. it was tax return presents. Uh, so we've got those, and we, um, unfortunately, uh, like to drink rum a lot, so we have a, a set of plastic swords that will crack this Actually, right at home, there. uh, in our backyard, and not <clears throat> kill each other with, because these do have some weight on them. And, and the dogs... <laughs> yeah, they don't we, like we, the sound of swords clanging inside the living room. So. We have two Australian shepherds, so if you can only imagine what that is in the backyard when they're seeing you clash swords against each other. These particular, This particular sword is actually um, the most historically accurate ones that we have. Um, really, throughout history, it's, it's kind of hard to nail down uh, a particular time period for a sword because... They changed so much, and there were so many different styles. So, but this one, as far as the 1720s, which which we mostly spend our time in, this particular style, the hilt, the the style of the uh, handle and the length of the sword, and the style of the blade, is the most historically accurate swords that we have. And they're actually uh, pretty good swords. Or decent weight, you know, for me being smaller stature for him, mm -hmm. I could still kind of put him on his toes, and I always try to keep mm -hmm. him on his toes. I, I, I got to keep him straight. Any other questions out there? Yeah. yeah. So those 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 are good to uh, actually fight with because they're they're pretty good swords. So um, that that's. Pretty much the history of those. Um, you know, we do diff a lot of different stuff, and and um, like our nicknames. You know, um, my nickname is Ballast. Everybody, every pirate tries to get a nickname. They, they want a cool, cool nickname yeah. too. And and being a pirate, you think you can walk into any crew and be like, "This is my, this is my nickname." Yeah, not so much. If you're an ass and you do something stupid, you get stuck with that nickname. Yeah, your nickname's gonna be ass. <laughs> and it's gonna stick, trust me. It will, because it's always <laughs> they always remember the most stupidest shit you've ever done, and that's what you get stuck with. Oh yeah. How uh, we got our nicknames wasn't we, we both actually have been given several different nicknames. Uh, the ones that have stuck the recent with our crew is the Ballast and Lashing. And that, it, it's not so much stupid. Uh, we were out on the adventure with the Blackbeard crew uh, this past fall. Was it the fall? Yeah, it's when we did the trailer, the original trailer for our fans. Yeah, Blackbeard. so we were out there and it was a really windy day. And it's a small sailboat. So we're going out on the sailboat, and everybody had all their stuff, their uh, their pistols, our flintlocks, the swords, shoes. Because obviously, if you're going to be on a deck, you ain't going to wear this dumb. So we were barefoot and had most of our stuff on the hatch. Well, uh, the ship uh, took a sudden hard to the side because we had a big gust of wind, and I happen to be sitting near everything, and I just lay it across everything. I this stuff's valuable, all right. We do spend a lot of stuff, money on this. We may make a lot of this, but we still put a lot of dough into this. So <laughs> I didn't yeah. want the shit to go into the yeah. the James River, the ocean, where wherever the hell we were at. So I laid across it. And uh, the joke after that was that I was lashing because I was lashing everything down. Yeah, she was trying to keep everything on the deck. I actually got mine the same day because of pretty much the same, same reason. reason. <laughs> um, 
the what she was talking about with the uh, the boat listing to the side. Um, one of my crewmates told me, "Hey, go over to the other side and be some be ballast," and it stuck. <laughs> so we were all trying to, you know, right the ship, and that's where that came from. So that's how we got the uh, appropriate ballast and lashing. Not that we are married, uh, but like I said, we've gone through very many renditions of nicknames throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and just ask our crew. Yeah. yeah. One one sticks one week, one sticks another week. Yeah. So we got Mad Dog, we got Mr. Brisket, uh, Mr. Brown, and then you start getting into the hotline because our, our crew, because we are part of a reenactment crew, uh, we stay in touch on Facebook because obviously it's the best way to do it, even though Facebook is evil. Uh, in our hotline, you're able to change nicknames to everybody, and it seems like on a weekly basis somebody gets a new, new nickname just because. <laughs> so. But I mean, it's not even just the two of us that love being pirates and doing this. I mean, our dogs. We have, like I said earlier, we had two. We have two Australian shepherds, and they're both named after pirates. Our youngest is her name is Bonnie, and of course she's named after Anne Bonnie, one of the most famous women pirates. And obviously, I want to, I want to be a famous woman pirate. <laughs> What's the fun in not being famous? Well-behaved women never made history. I'm not well-behaved. True. And Rugby, our older boy, uh, obviously his first name was Rugby, but his middle name is Rackham for Calico Jack. Calico Jack Rackham. Pirate. So we are truly a pirate household. And we truly live this. What do we do? This uh, is stuff that was in our home that we brought out. Because this is our lifestyles and how much fun we have with it. And we drink it, drinking lamp is lit. It's that time. Yeah. Drink lot, up me hearty Joe Ho. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the things you see in this little layer right here are things that we actually take with us when we go on go reenacting and things that we have had decorating our house. You know, uh, you know, if you know anybody that, that lives this lifestyle and takes it seriously, you know, <laughs> you can find any of this pretty much in any of their houses because it's just who they are. You, you, go to, are. you go to work and they end up knowing you as this. Mm -hmm. I do presentations. My background is pictures of me firing cannons. Uh, we During events, we'll go to our grocery store before we hit up the events and they know it. Maybe and they're so, it is so normal now. They don't even question it. They're like, oh, hey, yeah. good weekend to you, huh? <laughs> Pirates are in there. It's, uh, <laughs> it gets a little rough when you go into the restaurants because you get stopped like every five feet. People want to take pictures, you know, uh, that happens a lot. If you were watching our live stream from the Polar Plunge, I'm pretty sure you saw me going every five minutes. Hold on, picture. <laughs> hey, Stitcher. Hey, <laughs> it, it's it's amazing when you step out of the crowd and you're dressed like we are and you're having fun with it. It's why we're we're really bummed that the events have been canceled this past week. We we understand, and it has not only been this past week. Unfortunately, it's been through the end of the month, potentially into next month. Uh, here in Richmond, we have a huge Irish festival, and that was supposed to be today. That's what we were supposed to be broadcasting at today. And yeah. we were going to be with our friend Smoke and his wife and having fun doing our live broadcast then. And then. unfortunately, they canceled it. So to keep things going... And to try to keep the, the, the normal schedule going, we we're having fun with this here now. So, here we are. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, a lot of this we use for decorating at Halloween, you know. Uh, we're, we've gotten known 
in our neighborhood as the pirate house because I normally fly a pirate flag on the front of our house pretty much all year long. Yeah, there, Halloween, of course, there's one too. <clears throat> but, um, you know, going back to what Deborah was talking about with these events getting canceled and stuff, it's hard because we prepare for a lot of this stuff weeks, weeks in advance too. So, you know, when you're going along thinking something's going to happen and all of a sudden it doesn't, you know, that gets kind of disheartening. So we're trying to keep our heads up and not get too depressed about it, um, you know, because it's a big investment and there's a lot of preparation involved sometimes, so it doesn't make it easy. But going back to Halloween, um, we do that every year. I go nuts, of course, you know. Basically, I have to block off like the whole month of October. If it wouldn't ruin the ambiance of our cabin, I turn the camera around so you can see all the skeletons I am staring at right now. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're all... eight. And our column of skulls is sitting outside, so we were able to do this lovely setup. And, um,. Outside of the frame, we have another skull right outside of our arch. And then the skulls in the house. I will tell a short story. <laughs> tell us a short story. I will tell you a short story. I am chug, chug, chugging, smoking bacon. Uh, yes, the... and there is actually rum in these mugs, too. So, ha, ha. And yeah. down here. So and I here. Got... Rum. Look, look. We gotta prepared. have a backup. You know. We're prepared. So, back in January, when this original virus was going around, not the coronavirus, but the other chest infection that everybody was getting, I had stayed home from work. I was in bad shape. I was asleep on the couch. When I fell asleep on the couch, the wall above the lamp, above the couch, where I was sleeping, was white. When I woke up, there was skull and crossbones and two sconces, and the way the light lit up to it looked like the devil from hell came up. You know what that is? When you're coming half out of a sleep and you see that shit, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I think Frank the skeleton needs to dance around with drunk pirates. <laughs> Ain't nobody in here dancing right now. <laughs> it's Larry, and he's only yeah. a head. He has well, no Larry, legs. Larry's in the garage. I got no legs, Dan. Lieutenant yeah. Dan, you ain't got no legs. <laughs> It's just unfortunately. Love you guys, but nobody's dancing right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll dance here. Do, 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 do. I'll do the two toes when I'm sitting here going, yes, 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 yes. So, but <laughs> what can you do? What we do with a drunken pirate? What we do with a drunken pirate? <laughs> so, it's living as a pirate, and that's. Pretty much where we're at right now. We, if we can't do what we can do out in the public, might as well do it this way and be pirates. All right. Because we want to be pirates. Show us the skulls and skeletons. Now, yes, I All did right, say so I did skeleton. say Larry's head. We do have a skull we take with us to the events, and it is Larry's head. Larry, was, Larry's in the garage. Larry oh, is in the garage. Else. Just turn the camera around and show him all the no, goddamn no, skeletons. Oh, he's going to bring you a skeleton. Just for you, one. GTO. All right, one GTO. of seven that we have. His head's she backwards. Really, she really wasn't kidding. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's his back. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, there, there you go. His neck, his, I think his his neck was broken. I think his neck's broken. So here I come. Alright, so here he is. See? We weren't kidding. Skeleton. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Have him sit on your lap. Maybe that'll be nice. Uh, he wants to sit on my lap. Okay. Here we go. I'm do this without killing myself. Alright. See? You wanted a skeleton, I, I, you got a skeleton. I'm, we're not being Let me see if I can stick his head back on. I'm not gonna be a ventriloquist. No. Hmm. Nope. 
Backwards head doesn't sound fun. I think most of their heads are backwards. The best part is, is when we're on the cruise, <laughs> its head is popped off. Isn't that the one I took to the museum? Yes, I think it is, but his head is... I can't get it back on. I don't know. What the, ah, that's just... What? Yeah, it's not happening. Go ahead. Push it in your lap there, love. It's not happening. Hi, buddy. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Don't that's ask. all you get from my ventrilo sac. That, that's true. <laughs> but we really do have skeletons over there, so... This is what we get for being stuck inside for a fucking week. <laughs> yeah. You put skeletons in your lap. <laughs> Let me guess. All Larry wants for Christmas is skin. <laughs> and the rest of his he's bones. Got no, he's got no skin in the game. He's got no skin and he's got no bones. As far as uh, being pirates... Pirates... Um, Black powder! We get, get, get to play with black powder. Pirates get the shoot cannons. And the first time I got to shoot a cannon um, was actually last year at the Blackbeard Festival in Hampton Roads. Which is one of the largest, largest pirate festivals in the country. In the country. Yeah. It's uh, NMA. So we're hoping... All this bullshit stops so that we we don't miss it. Who's, hey, girl. Who? Don't call me wench. Hey, <laughs> lady. Who? Who is wench? Who else is wench? Huh? Hey. Looking good, guys. Hi, Vanna. Love you, dear. <laughs> Let's say hi to Vanna. Uh, hi, Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> Vanna. <laughs> Somebody else made me break out the skeleton. So here he is. And he's on Jay's lap. He's always <laughs> wanted a boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time I fired a cannon in my life was at Blackbeard last year in Hampton Roads. Um, it was cool because I got to do it on uh, the closing of Saturday night. Saturday night um, when they, right before they shot off the fireworks, because they have a huge fireworks display. And the cannon line was right by the bridge where they let off the fireworks. So it was pretty cool. Um, I actually have video of it. I wish I could show you guys, but it was a lot of fun and I'll never forget it. Um, it's only it's only one of seven. I promise GTO. It's only one yeah. of seven. Yeah, we're not turning the camera on. You don't need to see the rest of my shed. No, you don't. <laughs> it's a freaking mess. You don't. So <laughs> Why don't we throw half that shit away? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. But tell us about your first shot. Uh, my first was on Sunday. It was the end of the day. Uh, was in my lady kit. I, I dress as a cabin boy. Since we do reenactment with a historically accurate group, I dress as a, a cabin boy, and I do dress as a uh, more of a lady, quote unquote lady. So the corset, the skirt, the whole bullshit nine yards, I can hate it. I, I prefer to be in this comfortable, not sweating my ever loving ass off in the humidity of Virginia. Yeah. So there was a lot of that. There's last year. this. Yeah, <laughs> it's lot. been awful. It was awful last year. So I, I got to fire my first shots, um, and they couldn't get the lens stuck, which is the stick with the uh, with this with this with this. <laughs> it's got the uh, it's got the fuse on it, and you light it on fire, so you're able to fire at a distance because the shit's real. That is black powder we deal with. So, uh, that was my first experience shooting it. So, at the end of the whole Pirate Festival, Jay and I got to be a part of the Order of St. Barbara. And anybody who's a veteran should understand and know what the Order of St. Barbara is. Well, if, if you dealt with cannons. Um, well, artillery in general. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you did anything with artillery uh, or cannons... Um, you probably know what the Order of St. Barbara is. Um, so The Order of St. Barbara is the saint of artillery. 
So, cannons. The whole idea why she became the saint of this is because cannons were completely unreliable when they first came out. And they had a tendency to um, the kill the crews that were firing them. If you know anything about people back in those times, especially pirates and sailors, they're very superstitious. Very, very. So Black cat. They they wanted they wanted someone to watch over them while they were in battle and firing the cannons to make sure that they weren't going to get killed. So uh, Saint Barbara was, became the patron saint of cannoneers. But the question is, is why her? Why her and not Saint of, I don't know, Aunt Bonnie? <laughs> Whoever? Well, the reason why it was her is because her father actually killed her for reasons that I don't know about. So her father killed her, and then supposedly he got struck down by lightning shortly after killing her. And everybody's like, ooh, karma. You know, kind of like people buying up all, all the toilet paper and then trying to go sell it back to the store they bought it from and can't do it. Now they're stuck with a thousand rolls of toilet paper. Karma! <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what happened. She ended up, uh, he ended up dying from being struck by lightning. And because he died by being struck by lightning, uh, she turned around and ended up being uh, the, the saint of artillery so that's who we loud booms we this, she's pray a saint to? of loud booms do we pray to that no we don't pray I don't to that think we, we pray just to that. she just brings luck or watches over us word while, we're, fire, while word. we're in battle and firing cannons to make sure that everybody stays safe and doesn't get killed so the there is a ceremony that they do for us after you shoot a cannon. Basically, your first time shooting black powder ever. And it's mostly after you shoot a cannon. Because after you shoot a cannon, you have to clean the cannon. You know, it's all about keeping your equipment clean yes. and up to date. Especially with cannons, you do not Keep. want a cannon to get... Uh, we, up. we don't yeah. like our cannons that are old and gritty and dirty, do we now? No. You don't want to leave any powder behind. No powder. So that swab that they take out of the cannon after you get done firing it and they clean it, they take that and uh, line everybody up and um, they do a little ceremony where a member of the order um, basically kind of it's kind of like a knighting type of thing, but they take... Yeah, it's a knighting, except the knighting, they go... Yeah. <laughs> Instead of getting tapped, on, oh, oh, tapped oh, on the shoulders with a sword, you get swabbed in the face with black powder from a swab that just came out of a cannon that got cleaned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, smoke, you don't want a dirty cannon. You want a clean cannon. <laughs> I think across all ages, we can agree with that one. We don't want a dirty cannon. No. <laughs> you don't want to go up to a cannon that's been fired and have it still have black powder in it and all that. So you got to clean it out and make sure it's clean before you go on to fire it again. So after you do that and the swab, you got a dry swab and a wet swab. Well, we get the wet swab. And the wet swab goes all around the face yeah. and it's all there. <laughs> so... We have some lovely pictures of Ballast having it all in his face and me getting it on my face and, and down in the booty And down area. in here. You know, no extra. Just like that. So a lot of the a lot of the weapons that that uh, that we bring with us, I mean, pretty much all of them we are real. Uh, for example, this the swords we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. okay. Your his his flintlock, what he has on his belt, that's real. This this flintlock that, is that baby is real. This is a and this flintlock is a firing flintlock. It actually will fire. Um, this is a reproduction of what is called a Tower GR. Am I giving you enough smoke? You losing your shit? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we cough into my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> So this pistol will actually fire. Um, 
It probably needs a new flint on it because the flint's kind of worn out a little bit, but uh, it is a reproduction of a Tower GR. Um, basically, uh, the tower part refers to when this uh, pistol was made, um, after it was I told produced. You pirates are dirty. Yeah. After it pro was produced, um, this was back when the Tower of London was still in existence and actually being used. Um, they would send all the weapons uh, to the Tower of London and they would actually test them there. So they mark them after they test them and they, this particular one is obviously a reproduction so it doesn't have, if it was an original, it would actually have a stamp on the barrel from whoever inspected it and tested it saying that it was ready for service. <clears throat> Meaning that this is a, call this service pistol. It shit get, it gives a loud bang. Yeah. All of this. This is, is this so, is a big one. Uh, so if you're ever at an event, you know, PSA, PSA, when something big and boom goes off, you cup your ears like a fish. You don't stick them in the eardrums because you can pop your eardrums. That's you something. You can blow your eardrums. Right yeah, out. you can blow your eardrums, and that that shit's loud. You know, it's it's interesting. I'm not a big gun fan. I'm just gonna put that out there. I know a lot of the guys, a lot of the people in Spoken Bacon. You guys love guns. Cool on you. Never been a huge fan of it. I'm more into the bow and arrow. I shoot a recurve. She's in the light weaponry. You can't hear me fucking coming with that light yeah. weaponry. <laughs> Till you step on a stick. You know what? Screw you. If I'm coming from behind you and I stick an arrow up your ass, you won't hear me, but you'll definitely feel me. <laughs> um, but shooting the flintlock and shooting a cannon, that was so awesome. Just the power of being able to prep it and get it ready and let it go off. Shooting a cannon is not like shooting a pistol, you know? Even shooting it's a, a pistol, little... it, it's, still, well, shooting the footlock and the cannon, it's a little bit better than, you know, a little six-shooter where you pop the damn yeah. bullet in it, you roll it like the Wild West, and you pull the fucking trigger. <coughs> well, this, these things, you don't. It's the, the this, black this... powder and prepping it and yeah. not having it go off and peppering you in your face. It takes a little bit of work to fire one of these. Um, if you're, if you're good... GTO says, GTO says, I've been to Civil War reenactments. I bet it's loud. It is, especially, yeah. uh, it's not as loud when you're standing right next to it, firing it, versus being behind it. it the, the shit makes your ears pound afterwards. Yeah, and you definitely but, want to protect yourself. You, know? you feel it in the adrenaline rush, and you want to do it again. And, the, and, and it's the power of the black powder. Part, part and it's oh my the God. God. Part of it's the build up too, you know, because you got to do all the steps to prep a cannon to be fired. So you're doing all that and you're, you know, you're, fo you're focused on it. You're focused on making sure that you're doing all the steps correctly and making sure that you're prepped right. And then you back up, throw that lens stock, and you give the order and fire it. It, it, it's like a, it's like pro, you take pride in it because when it fires, you're like, I did it right, you know. It's the same thing with firing a, a flintlock. You know, there's, if you're, if you're good, you might be able to fire this thing in, in 20, 30 seconds back to back. That's if you're fast, you know. But, and that's, that, that takes a lot of practice, you know. So it's not like just taking a taking a forty five, you know, with fifteen shots and bang, 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 bang. You got to do some work to get this thing going. You yeah, know. Uh, unfortunately, if anybody raided our house, we would only have one shot with that, and the amount of time it would take yeah. me to reset my bow. I'm, when I have two dogs that will lick you to death. Quite sure what caliber this is. <laughs> I believe it's somewhere around fifty. But I'll tell you what, if you put a, say it is a 50, you put a 50 caliber lead shot into somebody, you're going to hurt them. <laughs> You've seen Black Sails, right? Uh, don't yeah. call me wench. We're drinking 100 proof Captain Morgan. 
Yeah. Hundred percent. We don't. We don't do the. We don't do the regular stuff. The light stuff. I'm. I'm. I'm screwed. I'm. I'm going to be drunk before eight o'clock on what's Saturday. She, what's she, what's she saying? She says, "What kind of rum you guys drinking?" I just yeah. said, "We're drinking hundred proof Captain Morgan." And then it is. It's and wait a minute. Did you put the Did you put the coconut rum in this too? Huh? Did no. you add the coconut rum in this no, one? It's, it's okay. Just... He, he normally adds extra rum into the hundred proof. And we made sure we brought some extra. extra. <laughs> and I extra. Knew, I knew I would run out before oh. we got done yapping. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Is that, that's rum? Boom, boom. boom, boom? She got the boom, boom in her hand. She name. got the boom, boom. <laughs> she went boom, boom. No, she, Hannah <laughs> says she got the boom, boom. She I got, got the boom, 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 boom too. Name. It's the bomb. <laughs> it's the bomb diggity. <laughs> Oh, I know Lord. it's a bad joke. Whatever. Yeah. I'll just drink for my bomb. <laughs> so. <laughs> so weapons are fun. Yes. When you get to use them, it, unfortunately, we don't get to do it as often as we would like. Well, no, because everything's fucking getting canceled right now. Mm. <clears throat> and well, the, and you spend the, all that time over the winter not doing a whole lot. But. The card. The cardinal rule is. None of this before you start playing with the back black powder. Yeah, we we yeah, don't that's... we don't want any accidents. We don't need any accidents. And as reenactors, we still have to get insurance. Actually, we have to buy yeah, supplemental there's... insurance to be able to shoot the black powder guns. Yeah. So you think about all you guys who get to buy the guns, take them home. Um. Talking about you, Smoke, who has how many? Uh, no supplemental insurance for that. Us that have to deal with the raw black powder and shoot because one of our crewmates, one of our crewmates, several years ago, and this is how we were talking about nicknames earlier. Oh, yeah. His nickname is Broadside. Broadside. <laughs> you know why his nickname is Broadside? Well, they were doing a sea battle, and an expensive yacht wouldn't get out of the way. And guess what he did? He fired his cannon. Now, when we fire our cannons, it's just straight black powder, and it will be uh, wads of paper or tin foil or something yeah. like that. It's supposed to disintegrate. Well, if well, you're was... an asshat and you're within, like, ten feet, the shit's gonna leave a blemish on your boat. He uh, he got too close, and uh, broadside was using paper wadding in his gun. So when uh, the reason that they try not to use that now, uh, most reenactors use tin foil because when you fire a cannon, the tin foil will disintegrate. Um, with paper, it it'll doesn't actually, disintegrate, it'll actually really. come out of the barrel and stay on fire, and little pieces of it <laughs> yeah. will fly out. Well, it's what not happened, as good as tinfoil, pretty much. <clears throat> what happened is when he fired his cannon, pieces of the wadding flew out and landed on the guy's boat, and, and he said ruined the finish of his boat. So he had to spend thousands of dollars to get this guy's boat refinished. It, 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 it had to be buffed out. Yeah. So, little millionaire got his feelings hurt. Yeah. He got a little too close to a pirate, and he got fucked up. <laughs> so, his when fault. when they filed the claim on that, apparently it was the first ever claim for the pirate community to do for this reenactment insurance. So, everybody was paying attention to it. So, yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah. And it wasn't a cheap one, too, to be a first. Uh, dare I say, if this goes well, we can do another one? <laughs> yeah, like next month when we actually do an event. So supposedly... No, before, before, it, before the virus not, corona gets up, hey, if we need entertainment. Look, Smoke, we'll, we'll do this once just a week. Yet. We'll do this once a week if you like, brother. We got you. No, what? No! Yes. No! Yes. No! <laughs> but... If, Shut him up. If that, I am not see, ready this for what, this. This is what happens when I drink too I much rum. I am not ready hold on, for this. Hold on. This is what happens when I drink too much rum. I start 
start getting crazy. Oh my god. So here, so the next uh, And the next official one is supposed to be at Yorktown. Yes. We we were hoping And this was the we're, plan. shut up. We are still hoping that Yorktown's gonna happen. Although with all the shit going on we don't know. The idea is our pillage overload. We want to take you guys to where the action is at. We want to do it within our campment, which is why originally we are earlier, between 11 and 12, because that's when a lot of the interaction is, and not joking, yeah, what, goes, what goes in camp yeah. stays in camp. Mm -hmm. so, when, so when the event is over and the drinking light is lit, uh, video is a no-no. Yeah, so, so no, and normally that happens usually sometime around 5 or 6 o'clock, so... It would be better to do it during the day when uh, the general public is around and we're not um, drinking a whole lot of this because we don't do I'm that I'm not the ready for that GTO. I was barely ready for this. What do you, what do you say? <laughs> He's laughing. Mm -hmm. I am not ready to do this more than once a week. I had to drink a couple of us. Just to get the liquid courage to sit down here and do this. And I hope it was good enough for you guys to enjoy it, fuckers. <laughs> Damn it. I mean, we've been doing it. Oh, it's been almost an hour. We've actually been able to keep this consistent for 50 minutes streaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, York, Yorktown is the uh, next... Big event. If they don't the cancel, if they don't it. cancel it. God, if they don't cancel it. So far they haven't. We can keep our fingers crossed. Um, Thursday night is pirate night. How did you come up with that? Oh, I'm guessing that was smoke. That was smoke. Yeah. Well, see? I opened my mouth. That's why he came up with that. <laughs> He's quick like that. I'm going to stick something in your mouth to keep up with that. <laughs> So, God, oh my God. So, yeah, in, in the uh, uh, foreseeable future, <laughs> what the fuck is going on in the world? Um, yeah. I, I guess we'll, I guess we'll do this next Thursday. Drinking, being pirates, because. Because we can do that. Because that's what we do. Drunk, drunk pirate night. Oh well, yes. I got some. Yes, I got pirate night. Yeah, it's it's. We're good with that. That's what? every that's every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should have been on. You should have been around last night when we did the crew call. So. Ah. What? No, I'm not getting into details. <laughs> so because we haven't been, in, we were supposed to see everybody this past weekend, and it's been a while. We did a full. Um, Facebook Messenger, which sucks because they only allow you eight people to come on at once. So we did a bunch with our crew coming online and talking and being stupid and being drunk and it's the best way we can be together right now. It sucks. But coronavirus be damned! I want rum virus. <laughs> so, yeah, we had fun last night. Um, we're, that's what we're trying to do right now. Another, another event that was supposed to happen this weekend was called Smoke. Mid I'll let you know what time. Let me be at least a little bit of sober before I decide on the time. GTO, yes, we'll do a drug fire at night if you guys like this. You gotta keep this off to me. Oh, okay. Well, hold on there. Smoke and bacon. Drunk Pirate Night, GTO. I like the idea of Thursday Drunk Pirate Night. Yes. GTO. I hope you enjoyed this yeah, tonight. Come back, brother. Uh, smoke bacon Thursday at eight or nine. I don't know. Uh, we need mermaids and wenches from time to time too. Yes. Well, they're not going to be on camera because we're social distancing. Yeah. But unfortunately, <laughs> it, well, see, that was actually going to be part of our plan with this too. Is uh, down the road we are going to bring, um, hopefully, if our crew members are willing to do it, maybe bring a couple of them by and and. 
talk to them and and let them tell Luke, their get them into this shit with us yeah. you know you see the the other so chaos can, of the two of so us you guys can see the idiots that we get along with because well, we're not just complete idiots i promise we're rubbed off from no others. they're not idiots we love every one of them you know what i'll tell you what here's something our crew <laughs> is like our extended family um we love every one of them and they support us with Parlay 8, even though it's something that we do outside of what we do with our crew as far as reenacting is concerned. You know, we're not as strict with Parlay 8 as, as they are with um, conforming to uh, the things that happened in that the Golden Age of Piracy. Um, but they still support us in everything that we do. We love every one of them, like uh, like family. And I have no doubt that they would have our back, and they do have our back, especially in, with what's going on right now. It, it, it's a bummer. Happening. We we really hope that. <clears throat> obviously, we were talking about doing this this month from the Irish Festival, and we have our family here in Richmond that. Our family, not in blood, but they are our family that was going to be a part of this and make it a lot of fun. And Yorktown. We we really hope Yorktown's going to happen. You know, yeah. we, well, that, we, we want to share with you guys the fun it is to be pirates. Right. It's not, yes, we want to teach you the history of it. We want to share you with, you know, with what we're doing because it's a part of it. But we love this. We would live this. And in all honesty, this past week I have been asked to work from home and it, it's been it's been different. <clears throat> Working from home with the husband and two dogs that want we attention. Killed each other yet. All the time. <laughs> and I stress yet. Yet. <laughs> but We've made the best of it. We sat there and we've made some pretty fucking awesome models. If you go to our website, parley8.com, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, we're all over the place. Look at that. She threw in a little promo. Shut up. Too sweet. Uh, and we're having fun with it. We're, we're trying to make the best of it. We're having fun with doing this. We made this up. To give you guys a show, and we've been very grateful that you guys have come out and joined us, GTO and Lumpy. You know, the other thing about uh, these events, too, is not only making stuff for them, but um, anticipating seeing our pirate brothers and sisters. That's another thing that we look forward to when we're doing this. So, with everything that's going on right now, it's really, it's tough, man. These are people that we love that we're not getting to see right now because we got a shelter in our place. Oh, hold on. We live um, next to train tracks, yeah. so that's what you're hearing. Thank God the way it's at the end of the show. So, we're almost at the end of the show. I guess we're going to be on next Thursday. Shit. Um, he does not that. So, next Thursday, we'll be back. An excuse to dress in kit. Um, <laughs> until, until, until the world returns to normal, I shall agree to this. Yes. There, well, she has a, nothing better to do. So she shares it with me, and we share it with you. I have nothing better to do? No, Paris is it. So, GTO, Trail Mix, and Crown Royal here. No! <laughs> Ah, no. Whiskey. Whiskey. Front Front that shit. Sir, have you been paying attention? (laughs) Brown Royal. This is Captain Morgan. No. I don't touch this shit. Rum, sir. A lot of bad stories with (laughs) Rum, sir. We're pirates. You can ask Smoke. I do not touch. I do not touch it. I do not smell it. I don't go anywhere near it. Look, she doesn't touch it, but I, I dig some crown oil. I know there's a train going by. I said that. Is it really loud? Can you not hear the words coming out of my mouth? So, um, we love you guys. We appreciate that uh, whoever came out and joined us tonight. Um, apparently, we're going to be doing this more often. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing because it's your fault. We need 
great stuff to do. And we love you guys. And we appreciate you coming out and joining us. Thank you, seriously. Thanks, Smokey Megan, for having fun with all of this. And trying to get the pirates to come out. I'm working on it, buddy. All right, it's 8 o'clock, guys. We appreciate you sticking around and having fun with us. Cheers. Uh, class. I guess we'll be back Thursday. Canadian whiskey. <clears throat> I, I'm still going to pass on that GTO. I Fair promise. Winds. <laughs> Fair winds and following seas, brothers. Night, guys. Be safe. Till next time. <laughs>